Hi, I'm Rod Kingsman, Vice President of the Philippine Amateur Baseball Association and person in charge of the Women's Baseball Program. But first of all, I would like to thank the WBSC for inviting our organization to be part of this webinar. And I'm very happy to share with you all of our experiences. So, how did we start the women's baseball program? Well, the Philippines always had a rich history of boys and men's baseball. But there was never a women's baseball program. But that is prior to our joining the 2019. Asian Women's Baseball Cup in China. And as of today, sad to say, we have not yet implemented our program. However, since placing third in Asia and was able to qualify for the World Cup, we now saw the chance to lay out our plans for a sustainable women's baseball program, which I will discuss with you at the later part of this presentation. So, one advantage we had was that there was already an existing men's and women's softball program. And as we all know, baseball and softball are very similar in how it's played. And the rules are almost the same, well, except that of pitching. Therefore, since we were told that we only had four to five months before the Asian tournament, we had no choice but recruit women softball players and in the hope that we can transform them to become at least competitive within that limited time frame. So what were our immediate challenges? No? Well, aside from making them get used to the smaller size of baseball, obviously, we decided that we must first build their strength, stamina, and endurance. No? Because logically, Baseball covers a bigger playing field than softball. Therefore, you will definitely expect them to throw the ball much longer and run much further. I remember actually the first uh, few weeks of practice, their throws were very short of their targets. And in base running, they would start so fast, but only to see them slow down halfway between the bases. However, there are also advantages with softball players. Uh, softball is pl played in a very fast pace. So more often, you use your instincts and quick movements to react to game situations. Another advantage of softball players is in batting. The team actually found that hitting baseballs were easier than softballs since the pitching distance was further away. They had more time to think. And they were also happy that they did not have to deal with the rising pitch in softball. But the biggest challenge of all we faced was finding pitchers. Since pitching in baseball and softball are totally different hmm? or actually complete opposites. Furthermore, we believe that this position requires 50% training, 50% talent, and obviously because they are the heart of the team. So, during our uh, team tryouts, all candidates were really made to go through several hours and several days of a com comprehensive pitching drills, and the results of which guided our decision. To the final roster of the team. So, what followed next was a daily four month long crash course on how to play baseball the proper way, meaning all players had to go through the very basics of the game. Everybody had to start from scratch, no matter what your skill level was. And through these sessions, you find out now how committed the player is to improve their skills and likewise how committed they are to the goals of the team. 
actually our uh, players commented during those days that it was the most difficult part of their journey. But it was the most rewarding. So what are our other major difficulties that we face? As I mentioned earlier, there was no women's baseball program in the country. So therefore, as in all things, money was the biggest concern. We were uh, trying to get someone to finance a project which no one has ever seen. It was very hard to convince a would-be sponsor to spend a large amount on an unproven project. Therefore, there was no other way for us but to literally beg everyone and anyone. We had to exhaust all our personal contacts to convince them to support a project that we truly believe in and are so passionately committed to. Also, since most of our players were athletic scholars from different universities, we likewise asked them to solicit any assistance they could get from their respective schools. All these players had to sacrifice their personal time and funds just to continue practicing with the team during their, those first months because we did not have enough means to support them. So at that time, we then turned to the different media outlets. We used every opportunity to promote the team, the players, and even the city where they came from. We did this just to get people to notice us. And ultimately, the government, through the Philippine Sports Commission and the Philippine Olympic Committee, took notice and finally gave their support for the project. Also, since our team made a big impact at the 2019 Asian Women's Baseball Cup and qualified for the now postponed 2020 World Cup, we now had to think of the future of women's baseball in the country. We then doubled our efforts in the promotion of awareness. Because, because of this, our team became instant radio and television and internet sensations. So we took advantage of this situation and really made public our comprehensive plans for women's baseball through the different media outlets in the hope that now corporate sponsors will take notice and ultimately support our program. However, as fate would have it, a worldwide pandemic hit us all and placed on hold all, and I mean all, our plans. So, here are some plans that we were supposed to be implemented in 2020, which was aimed to create more awareness and encourage more women to participate, particularly from the youth sector. So first, we were already preparing to lobby the Philippine Department of Education to include youth girls baseball in their curriculum. Because boys baseball was already part of their existing program and tournament schedules. So it was just a matter of an inclusion of one event on their already successful platform. We were also planning to host a countrywide 18-under and 23-under women's baseball tournament in March and in April. This was supposed to allow us to immediately find the pool of potential players to choose from for the national team or for the next national team. We, will we were already laying the groundwork for hosting an invitational tournament, an international invitational tournament on the 14 under and the 16 under age group around July and August. So 
We already also got commitments from many schools to include girls baseball in their school program and annual tournament schedule. We were also strongly lobbying the Philippine Sports Commission, who is the government body on sports, to include women's baseball in their annual tournament aimed to find future national athletes. We also reached out to different international youth baseball organizations, such as the Little League and Pony Baseball Softball League, which our president, Mr. Chito Laizaga, and myself are very active members of these organizations. And we were, we are currently working on the inclusion of women's baseball in their respective work. So, one last thing I'd like to share is a bit about the Philippine team players. Actually, most of them come from underprivileged or poor communities. Therefore, the feelings of inferiority is most prevalent. In, again, being underprivileged, they find they look up to the rich and at all, actually, at everything they see new, big, or nice. But always understand, always make them understand that sports is a great equalizer. In all kinds of sports, you know, there is an equal playing field. Rich or poor does not matter anymore in the field or out there. So teach them to never feel inferior, even if their opponents have better equipment, nicer uniforms, and many other things, no? or even a big and beautiful playing venue. But teach them to be a champion. Teach them to have the heart of a champion. Because the heart of a champion means that win or lose, they can always be proud of themselves because they gave everything they had. They gave it their all. They never quit. And they will still always give the very, very best to win. So, if you're successful in teaching this virtue to them, then you have already made the first big step in molding a better future in our world. Again, thank you WBSC for giving us this opportunity to share.